This is Mac OS Ken. Reality gets its own operating system. Commander Rakers makes the business case for Mac. And an Apple podcast wins a prestigious award. It is Thursday, the 10th of February, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Kanji device management for your Apple environment. Learn more at K-A-N-D-J-I kanji dot I-O slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by New Relic, helping you monitor, debug, and improve your entire stack. If you're a developer or a software engineer, you know that finding a problem in your stack can be like finding a needle in a haystack. How much time have you spent trying to figure out what went wrong when something went wrong, and how much more time do you want to spend doing that? Stop it with New Relic. New Relic combines 16 different monitoring products that you would normally buy separately, so engineering teams can see across the entire stack in one place. New Relic looks for anomalous activity and pings you, letting you catch and fix problems before they hit the end user. That's why the developer and ops teams at Atlassian, DoorDash, GitHub, and more than 14,000 other companies use New Relic to debug and improve their software. The next problem is just waiting to happen. Get New Relic before it does. And you can get access to the whole New Relic platform and 100 gigabytes of data, free, forever, no credit card required. Sign up at newrelic.com slash macOSken. N-E-W-R-E-L-I-C. That's newrelic.com slash macOSken. newrelic.com slash Mac OS Ken. Worried that Apple has forgotten the whole augmented reality, virtual reality thing? Worried that the world at large has forgotten? Fear not. A number of sites, including Apple Insider, ran stories Wednesday about Reality OS. Sounds like a character from a cyberpunk novel is actually, uh, apparently what Apple will call the operating system for AR, VR, MR, XR environs. According to a piece from Mac Rumors, new references to Reality OS were found in App Store upload logs and Apple open source code Wednesday morning. The Apple Insider piece had developer Steve Trotton Smith eyeing the code. In a post on Twitter, he said, This at least confirms it. one, has its own OS and binaries, and two, has a reality OS simulator. When will those of us who don't speak code see something we can understand? Apple is, of course, saying nothing officially. Current thinking is it'll be the better part of a year, though. Apple Insider says when references to ROS were first found a little over four years ago, it was expected that Apple could introduce an Apple AR headset by 2020. More recently, late 2022 has been predicted, but even that is likely to slip back as Apple is reportedly finding hardware and software snags. One Apple-following financial analyst has an idea for the Cupertino company. Sell more Macs to business. A piece from The Street has Wells Fargo analyst Aaron Rakers noting tremendous potential in that direction. According to a note from the analyst, while Apple's Mac revenue only accounts for about 10% of total revenue, we have seen Apple become increasingly vocal about the adoption of Macs in the enterprise space. He said by the report to see three key reasons for businesses to get a Mac. The move to M1 series processors, identified by Apple CEO Tim Cook on Apple's most recent earnings call as a driver for recent Mac adoption. Then there's the growth of as-a-service offerings like Apple Business Essentials. And finally, there's the continued expansion of businesses letting employees choose their own computing platforms. 
according to the street. Apple's M1 Max have already garnered attention in the consumer market due to performance and productivity improvements present in the devices. The way Raker sees it, when this productivity increase is scaled across a large enterprise or organization with hundreds of developers, the savings could justify upgrading entire fleets of Macs, perhaps sooner than dictated by the typical three- to four-year upgrade cycle. Raker has an overweight rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is $205. It is hard to know how to talk about this next story, so here goes. Celebrite, the Israeli company that makes tech to siphon data off of iPhones and Android phones, is big with the U.S. government. Like the U.S. government is a big customer. 9 to 5 Mac highlights a report from The Intercept that has Celebrite saying in a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission that it has more than 2,800 customers in the U.S. government. The piece quotes The Intercept, saying Celebrite securities documents reviewed by The Intercept show that all but one of the 15 U.S. cabinet departments, along with several other federal agencies, have acquired Celebrite products in recent years. The list includes many that would seem far removed from intelligence collection or law enforcement, like the Departments of Agriculture, Education, Veterans Affairs, and Housing and Urban Development, the Social Security Administration, the U.S. Agency for International Development, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Oh, and police departments. It looks like lots of police departments are Celebrite customers, according to the report. On the one hand, Celebrite is less dangerous than NSO Group's Pegasus in 9 to 5 Max estimation. That's because for Celebrite to work, the entity working it has to have access to the physical device. But the piece says, the highly intrusive tool is reportedly cheap enough to be routinely used to check the phones of travelers at immigration checkpoints, and suspects in crimes as trivial as shoplifting and being drunk in public, raising obvious privacy and civil liberties concerns. Plus, they're better than the bake sale. You can find a ton of used Celebrite units on eBay. I wish I was kidding. So, that's a thing. Remember all the OS betas that went out from Apple to developers on Tuesday? They all went out to Apple's public testers on Wednesday. Apple Insider says Apple made the second betas of iOS and iPadOS 15.4, macOS 12.3, tvOS 15.4, and watchOS 8.5, available to members of the public beta program not to be taken internally, and not to be installed on machines on which you rely. Apple Insider says both it and Apple strongly recommend users don't install the betas on the mission-critical or primary devices. While they probably won't brick your machine, they are betas, so you can't say for sure. That said, if you've got a test device laying around or just like living on the edge... You can get more info on Apple's public beta program at beta.apple.com. One of the members of Apple's Safari team wants to know how to make Apple's browser better. But seriously, come with actual problems, not just gripes. Mac Rumors writes up a couple of Twitter comments from Jen Simmons, an Apple evangelist and developer advocate on the web developer experience team, for Safari and WebKit. Simmons took to Twitter Tuesday saying, Everyone in my mention saying Safari is the worst. It's the new Internet Explorer. Can you point to specific bugs and missing support that frustrate you, inhibit you making websites or apps? Bonus points for links to tickets. Specifics we can fix. Vague hate is honestly super counterproductive. That reminds me so much of the hate iTunes used to get before they split out movies and podcasts into their own applications. People would say they hated it. I would ask how they would change it. And they'd say, I don't know, but I hate it. Personally, I still miss it, but whatever. 
also counterproductive, Simmons continued in a follow-on tweet, pointing to bugs from several years ago, complaining about them over and over and over. Let's talk about current bugs, currently missing or partial support for new features. Let us know what's most important to you. What do you want us to tackle first? Though in yet another clarifying tweet, she said, By pointing to bugs from several years ago, I definitely meant bugs that have already been fixed. Sorry. If it's several years old and not fixed, do ping with a link or feedback number if you filed feedback. I'd like to look into it. I do not know Jen Simmons, but for that Twitter thread alone, I really like her. More news in a moment, but first a word from Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. New person starting in sales today, you need to get their MacBook set up, get their iPad going, you got a conference call at three, you need to hit the store on the way home, and hey, what was that second thing you were supposed to do? Not only is setting up new hardware a pain, it is also time consuming, and there is so much stuff to remember. Forget all of it with Kanji. With Kanji, new Apple hardware can be ready for your new hire quickly and easily with all the apps and settings they need and that you need them to have. Devices managed with Kanji keep themselves secure. Apps are patched, macOS is updated, and security controls are enforced without active management from you. It's not doing it on its own, though. You decide how soon after release updates get updated. Kanji lets you do that without having to deal with individual users or their machines. And if anybody changes anything they weren't supposed to, Kanji detects it and fixes it, saving you time and trouble. Go to kanji.io slash macOSCan for a free demo and trial. K-A-N D-J-I, that's kanji.io slash macOSCan. Find out why companies like Segment, Allbirds, Lacework, and others use Kanji for zero-touch Apple device management. K-A-N-D-J-I, again, that is kanji.io slash macOSCan. Your free demo and trial are waiting at kanji.io slash macOSCan. It's not often you hear about an Apple store ruining it for an entire mall, but such was the case in Glasgow on Tuesday. Imore says the Brayhead shopping mall had to be evacuated earlier this week after a fire in an Apple store. The piece quotes a Scottish Fire and Rescue Service spokesperson who said, We were alerted at 4.22 p.m. on Tuesday, February 8th, to reports of fire affecting retail premises at Brayhead Shopping Center, Glasgow. Operations Control immediately mobilized four fire engines to the location and firefighters extinguished the fire. Crews left the scene at 4.53 p.m. after ensuring the area was made safe. I know what you're thinking. Weed. That may not be what you were thinking. Either way, it wasn't that. Imore says the alert was caused by a smoking battery, likely from a repair device that had come through the store's Genius Bar. The store was back to business as usual on Wednesday. Welcome another Oscar winner to the Apple TV Plus roster. Deadline says Adrian Brody, Academy Award winner for 2002's The Pianist, has signed on to the Cupertino streamers Ghosted. That's the romantic action-adventure film that was originally meant to bring the MCU's Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson back together on screen. A scheduling conflict forced Johansson out of the pick. She was soon replaced in the production by Anna de Armas. No word on Brody's part in the picture except that he has one. The sky is everywhere, is everywhere tomorrow, and Apple's got a short promotion to, well, promote it. This is the one about the 17-year-old musical prodigy who struggles after the sudden death of her older sister. 
She falls in love, though that's complicated by her relationship with her sister's former boyfriend. I Moore says Apple TV Plus has posted a short Q&A with the film stars ahead of its premiere. It's roughly two minutes with Grace Kaufman and Jacques Coulemont, the stars of The Sky is Everywhere. You can catch that now on YouTube. While Apple is promoting it for Valentine's Day, which is Monday, don't forget. The film actually hits Apple TV Plus on Friday, the 11th of February, which is tomorrow. Don't forget. It's not just TV shows and movies from Apple TV Plus that win awards. Apple streaming service issued a press release Wednesday announcing an award for one of its original podcasts. The company says the Apple TV Plus original podcast, The Line, has earned a 2022 DuPont Columbia Award Silver Baton from the Columbia School of Journalism. Awarded annually, the release says the DuPont Columbia Awards honor news stories and films for the strength of their reporting, storytelling, and impact in the public interest, upholding the highest standards in journalism. If you've not heard the podcast, the press release says the line is a six-part narrative non-fiction audio series that provides listeners a unique perspective on previously untold aspects of the story of U.S. Navy SEAL Eddie Gallagher, who was charged with committing war crimes before ultimately being acquitted on all but one count. The podcast appears to be available wherever you get podcasts, not just Apple's podcast platform. There is also a four-part documentary series of the same name, streaming now on Apple TV+. And finally today, Oprah Winfrey has a book club. Reese Witherspoon has a book club. In retrospect, it seems obvious what George Strombo Strombolopoulos had to do. TechCrunch says the Canadian broadcaster and Apple Music Hits host has started a book club in the Apple Books app. Called Strombo's Lit, if you're wondering what the club will cover, it kind of sounds like whatever Strombo wants to cover. Though he hosts a music show for Apple, it will not be a music-focused book club. Rather, the piece says the theme of Strombo's Lit is fairly broad. It will offer a lens through which to better view the world, Apple says, and the target demographic for the club will be anyone interested in learning the stories from some of the world's best authors. First on the list for Strombo's Lit, the sci-fi thriller Termination Shock by Neil Stevenson, the author of such books as Anathem, Snow Crash, and The Diamond Age. Strombo's Lit is live now in Apple Books. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by New Relic helping you monitor, debug, and improve your entire stack. Learn more and get started at newrelic.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Kanji, device management for your Apple environment. Learn more at k-a-n-d-j-i kanji dot i-o slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macoscan. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.